All right. So before we start changing symbology, labeling things, producing automatic PDF reports of maps and all the fun spatial analysis we can do within ArcGIS Pro. First, we do need to uh, open up ArcGIS Pro. And then secondly, we need to understand the interface, where things are, where we go to do certain tasks. Okay, so that's what this video is about. Just kind of getting to grips with the interface of ArcGIS Pro. To open up ArcGIS Pro, you will either have an icon either on your desktop or your taskbar here. And there's a little blue icon called ArcGIS Pro or alternatively you go into start all apps. You should have a folder there called ArcGIS. And then we just left click ArcGIS Pro. If you're loading up ArcGIS Pro for the first time after installation, it might take a second or two, but you know, the, the latest versions of ArcGIS Pro are uh, typically quite quick to load up. So you can see here, after it initially launches, uh, there's two main mindsets or ideas uh, to keep uh, thinking of when we're getting to grips with ArcGIS Pro. The first one is, okay, ArcGIS Pro sounds like it stands for ArcGIS Professional. I personally like to think of it as ArcGIS Projects, right? As the first kind of mindset shift that we now have a thing if you're coming from ArcMap, if you're coming from QGIS, if you're coming from a map info background, the idea in ArcGIS Pro is that it is a project. You can see here, I have one called ArcGIS Pro Training Course, right? Uh, and it's a .ap or X file. What that means is that all my maps, all my layouts, all my 3D scenes, all my toolboxes, all my database connections that I've made as part of a project exist within one file type and that's the ap or x file we don't need to worry about you know what each kind of file extension means whatever but it's just important to note that arcgis pro is a project based software the idea being that i have multiple maps multiple layouts multiple scenes multiple data sets all tied in to a single workspace that's the first idea to keep in mind the second idea is that Esri, the people who create, maintain, and ultimately sell you ArcGIS Pro, uh, have quite a substantial partnership with Microsoft. And what that means is that the two companies provide various points of integration between their two software stacks. And yes, it means that we can drag and drop Excel sheets uh, into ArcGIS Pro projects, or there's an Excel plugin for ArcGIS, et cetera. But it also means that the actual interface, when we're talking about interface, which is what this video is about, if I didn't tell you that Esri were the people behind ArcGIS Pro, you would be justified in thinking that it is a Microsoft product, right? Uh, because if I open up an Excel worksheet here, for instance, you can see here I'm signed in up the top right. So I'm signed into an organization. So there's cloud-based licensing happening somewhere and that the actual product itself, in this case, Microsoft Excel is divided into what we call tabs up the top. So that's where my file, home, insert, draw and ribbons, which each tab would have a ribbon of tools associated with it. So if I wanna click on data and I click on filter, I get different options to when I click on page layout size, for instance, right? But, you know, much of the ArcGIS Pro interface is very reminiscent of Microsoft products. So if you're au fait with Microsoft, then uh, you're going to find learning ArcGIS Pro a lot easier. So there's two ideas to keep in mind. Think of it as a project-based system, which it is. And secondly, you know, uh, if in doubt about anything and you're au fait with Microsoft, then try and think of it as a, from a Microsoft perspective. If you're if you're familiar enough with Excel, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, whatever it is, you know uh, things generally seem to be in the same place in ArcGIS Pro. So there's two ideas to keep in mind. The very next step. So we open up 
ArcGIS Pro, if we have it on our desktop, if we've accessed it via the start menu, whatever it is, when we initially load it up, we should see recent projects. Now, if you're just getting started with ArcGIS Pro, hopefully not gonna see many recent projects here, but that's that's where as you start to you know develop your projects, create projects, open up projects, that's where they start to appear. And then up the top, we see map, catalog, global scene, local scene, and start without a template. There are your five ways to create an ArcGIS Pro project. Map, of course, is a 2D right um, representation of the Earth's surface where we can load in data sets so we can start off with a map, add our data sets into it and get going straight away. We can open up a catalog view, very useful if you have tons of different data sets and you wanna see which ones are GIS readable or not. Catalog is a good way to do it. So it gives you an overview of your data sets. Think about it as a Windows Explorer, right? Your file explorer, which we all have, right? Um, on, on our Windows laptops and desktops. Uh, but think about it as just a GIS readable version of Windows Explorer. So for instance, in Windows Explorer, you might have PDFs, Microsoft Word documents, you might have JPEGs. Obviously these are non-spatial data sets. Catalog views or catalog panes rip out all the non-spatial GIS data sets and only show you what is quote unquote GIS readable. So your CSV files, shape files, file geodatabases with feature classes, stuff like that, yeah? Next, we have global scene and local scene. Now, if you don't know the difference between the two, we're not going to dive into it, you know, because it is a uh, still globally, you know, uh, map is used predominantly, I want to say 80% of the time. You might have 3D products, projects uh, going on within your organization, but just a handy way for now as we start to get to grips with ArcGIS Pro, a handy way of thinking about this is a global scene primarily used for 3D models that are geo-referenced, right? So 3D models that have coordinates associated with them. You can plot that 3D model on the Earth's surface. You know that this 3D model represents a building that is found within a certain city. A local scene then is a 3D model without coordinates. That's not geo-referenced, right? It's just a handy way to think about it, dissect the two. Uh, or if you have local coordinate systems or local projections that you want to use, predominantly use a local scene for that, right? Um, worth noting, you know, that um, when we do get in to 3D models, just a little caveat, I suppose, a vast majority of our coordinate systems that we use um, in ArcGIS Pro, whether you're coming from an Irish perspective, UK perspective, it is indeed um, a, a system that is that is measured in meters, right? So a lot of coordinate systems are in meters. Funnily enough, a lot of 3D models, especially nowadays with the integration of BIM models and Revit models, um, they're created in millimeters, right? So we might have offsets and then it just depends which one you're gonna use, right? Because if your 3D model is in millimeters, you try and convert it into a coordinate system that's using meters, to quote that that meme, you're going to have a bad time, okay? Uh, but just roughly, global scene is everything that's geo-referenced. In the 3D world, local scene is everything that's not. Uh, and then we have, of course, start without a template. So if I want to create a temporary project, right, if I just need to open up something, get data into it, maybe I need to do a quick analysis, but I'm not going to save the project or anything, or if you press for time, you can always start without a template, yeah? Um, and that just means that it gets saved locally. Once you close it down, if you don't save it, it doesn't exist anymore, it won't pop up in your recent projects or anything like that. Um, so you don't need to create a project for each and every work uh, or, or task, uh, workflow or task that you're gonna um, carry out in ArcGIS Pro, yeah? Up the top right, you can see I'm signed into my ArcGIS online organization. I could equally be signed into my ArcGIS enterprise, just depending on what your organization has set up. On the left-hand side, I have the homepage, which we talked about. I have learning resources and I have settings. Settings that you figure it out by yourself, but very useful for like any kind of software updates. If you wanna see your licensing, if you wanna see you know, what tools are available to you, 
you can do that via settings. You know, if you want to set up any default folders, you can do so in settings. But for now, we're going to get started with map. And if you click on any one of these four options, you're going to be prompted to give it a name and a save location. Okay, so uh, if your organization has a lot of people who are going to be using ArcGIS Pro, and you all want to be signed in at the exact same time, working on the exact same ArcGIS Pro project, it is possible, right? So you could save a Pro project um, within your organization servers, right? A server that everybody has access to. You could save it locally on your C drive. You could save it uh, wherever you want, really. Uh, but the most important thing is that we give it a name. So I'm just going to call this mini course series because that, that is what uh, this video is going to be going to. And we have an option just by default, create a folder for this project. Best practice is you keep it there because that's where all your feature classes as part of your file geo database go. That's where all your maps go. That's where all your layouts go. Cool enough. And if you're happy enough with your default save, you just press okay. Now your map view, right? Your initial extent might change uh, a little bit from mine, right? Um, my map overview is, a, is an outline of Ireland. Um, depending on your location in the world, depending on your organization, if you're a local authority based in Ireland, you might see something different. You might just see an extent of your city, for instance. Um, but just to note, the, the primary thing here is that the map view is open. It is the central view that I have on my screen here. I have a mouse alongside me, right? So if I just use the scroll bar, I can scroll out, I can scroll in, uh, and then I can left click to drag and navigate my map. So I can zoom into an area, I can pan it around, and I can zoom back out. Yeah, uh, just, to, just to talk about the, the main element there, which is my map view. And again, we go back to, you know, the Microsoft Excel snippet that I showed you at the start of this video. And we talked about these tabs, right? So our tabs are slightly different. There's no file, home, data, whatever, right? In ArcGIS Pro, but there's project, map, insert, analysis, view, which we'll get to uh, in, in due course, each one of these and the most important tools uh, within each tab, within each ribbon. When we click on map, right, as a starter point for our project, we're going to land on insert. That's not to say, you know, like insert, cool, insert a map, insert a layout, insert a 3D scene, for instance, cool enough, yeah? But if we start from the top left, we have these kind of quick access icons, right? Uh, if we need to add more to it, we have this downward facing arrow and we can put in a few more options if we want to, right? Um, but just by and large, we have new project, open up an existing project, save this project, which is very important. And you'll note as well that it does give you keyboard shortcuts. So if I hover over um, save project, right? If I just press control S, that does the same thing, right? But then there's undo buttons, control Z, redo buttons as well, control Y. Um, but just these handy quick access shortcuts can also be achieved. Uh, using keyboard shortcuts as well. But just to talk about that, you know, most of the time I'm coming up here and just click and save. Yeah, uh, very important to save your work as you go through. Project then is the equivalent to file anywhere else, right? So if we have Adobe Acrobat, if we have Microsoft Excel, right? Typically we have this thing called file, file, save, save as. But it just gives us information around, you know, what type of licensing we're on. We have those quick access options as well if we want to save project as, so if we want to save a, a copy of it, if we want to see what portals we're connected to, if we want to see what licensing options we have, you know, and then we have tons more default options as well. If you want to change the default location of where everything's changed to, if you want to change the actual default database of your project, you can do all that in here, but they're really kind of like, customizations on an individual level, yeah? 
to the right of project then we have the map tab. This is where we're gonna be kind of uh, exploring data sets as we you know uh, get into it, right? So we can change the base map, we can add data sets to it. There's selection tools, which we'll cover in a later video, but just getting answers from the data, how to add data into it, how to get information from it. If you wanna do any measurements, if you wanna search any coordinates, you can do so as well. But I would say, you know, for a vast majority of use cases as you're getting started with ArcGIS Pro, you're gonna spend a lot of time in the map tab. The next tab we have then is insert. And really, you know, I, I've been a GIS consultant and a trainer for, for over a decade now in 2024. It's quite scary to think how old I'm getting. Um, but, you know, I have used ArcGIS Pro since it was launched, right? Um, right, way, way back when as version zero, right? Uh, in, in beta testing, even before it became version one. And I can tell you right now, right? Uh, not obviously a decade of using ArcGIS Pro because it's, 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 it's younger than a decade, but majority of the time when I'm in the insert tab, I'm only clicking two buttons. And that is new map, new layout. That's it, right? And it's worth noting that in ArcGIS Pro, as indeed a lot of Microsoft products, right? Just to, just to maintain the similarities between the two, we have two different options when it comes to buttons, right? So I can see here, I'm on the insert tab. I have my ribbon of tools. And then I might have an icon and then I have text underneath. And you can see here, if I, if I hover over this, you can see it's highlighted in blue. The icon is highlighted in blue. And then when I go into new map, it's highlighted in blue, but there are two part buttons available in ArcGIS Pro. And that goes right throughout the software, right? So majority of the time, if you're kind of stuck and you're like, wait a second, if I go into like, you know, new map, it's a different thing. If I click on the icon to what I get when I click on text, right? Uh, and it becomes more apparent, you know, if we're adding in data, if I click on the icon, I get access to one window. If I click on the text, I get access to more options as well. It's just something to keep in mind as we go through ArcGIS Pro, but the two main buttons we're going to be using in insert definitely are new map majority of the time and then new layout as well. Yeah, as we start to create our layouts, we have an analysis tab. This is where we go for any spatial analysis that we want to do. If we want to put a buffer on a point, if we want to conduct a drive time analysis, if we want to cookie cut out uh, different polygons from other polygons. This is where we go, right? More advanced users might be familiar with Model Builder, Python. Although if you're familiar with that, I don't know what you're doing watching this video, but there's tons of different spatial analysis tools that we can conduct in this analysis tab. If we go to view tab as well, I mentioned before, right? That it's useful to think of ArcGIS Pro as a project based, right? ArcGIS projects, if you wanna call it that. And within our projects, because we have access to multiple maps, because we have access to multiple 3D scenes, it is possible to start linking views together as well, right? So uh, we'll, we'll do that at, at, the, at the end of this video. Um, but I can have multiple views of things. So if I just wanna load in a data set into one map, and then I have a data set in another map, and I wanna show them side by side, I can do that as well. When we get to creating, editing, maintaining data sets, we're gonna be in the edit tab uh, quite a lot. The most popular tools within this are the most popular buttons to press are obviously create, modify, delete. We have different options when it comes to editing, which we'll get into the most popular ones. Uh, and then of course, save or discard, right? Uh, edits, right? So we're in editing sessions when it comes to data sets, but we'll cover all that. Imagery, not quite used, right? Uh, not, not commonly used uh, in in day-to-day -day workflows, but if your organization does have a lot of imagery, there are, of course, uh, raster functions, which are raster calculators that we can use and we can subtract imagery from each other. We can utilize deep learning tools as well. So there's deep learning models that might look at a satellite image and start extracting, you know, um, 
uh, canopy coverage, right? So tree canopies, the areas of trees from a satellite image and then digitize them into a polygon. There's all sorts of stuff we can do within imagery in ArcGIS Pro. Not commonly used, um, but used nonetheless in certain projects. Then we have the share tab. So we have really kind of like a few different options when it comes to sharing. You know, we can package up our whole project and send it on to a colleague or a consultant. Um, we can package up an entire map, right? And all its corresponding features within that map. And we can share it to ArcGIS Online. We can share it to ArcGIS Portal. Uh, or we can share individual data sets as well. And, and we'll look at all that, uh, of course. If we're in a layout view, we can, of course, uh, start exporting PDFs, JPEGs, PNGs, GeoTIFFs, whatever it is. And then, of course, we always have this little help tab that we can come back to uh, and, and make use of if needed. Yeah. Just um, to finish off this video, you'll notice as well, we talked about the map and OK, on the left hand side, that's our kind of table of contents where all our data sets are going to be loaded into. But then we also had this thing called catalog pane, right? And catalog pane uh, can be found in view. And it is probably one of the most important um, elements of ArcGIS Pro to be aware of when you're setting up your projects initially. It's also where you go to find everything within your project. So we can see here there's maps, there's toolboxes, there's databases, there's styles, folders, locators. And if we start to add in 3D scenes, right? So global scenes or local scenes, if we start to add in layouts to this project, they'll, they'll start to appear here as well, right? But catalog pane, again, think of it as Windows File Explorer just for GIS data sets, right? So everything is GIS readable, you can find in here in your catalog. Now you can view it one of both ways. You can view it as a catalog pane, which is what this is, or you can view it as a catalog view and it'll open up a brand new tab. If we close this down, you can start to search right, uh, and see various folders, right? And it just gives you a more centralized view than a catalog pane. Me personally, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but I like to make use of catalog pane because it's just on the right-hand side. I can drag and drop things into my map view, into my ArcGIS Pro project, and uh, it's all cool in the gang, yeah? So let's say I have a map here, and then... I want to get another map, right? So if you're coming from ArcG uh, ArcGIS Desktop, ArcMap, this is going to blow your mind, right? So you can have two different maps within the same uh, workspace, right? So for instance, just to give you an example workflow before we tidy up this video on the ArcGIS Pro interface, if I go to Insert and I go to, say, New Global Scene, Once that starts opening, you'll see my catalog pane shifts a little bit, right? If I expand maps, I can see I have one map, so my 2D view, and then I have one scene, which is my 3D view, right? So if I zoom out on the scene, I can see that that is indeed a 3D globe or the best representation of a 3D globe we can get. If I zoom out on my map, it's just like a flat sheet of paper, yeah? If I wanted to, because a lot of things within ArcGIS Pro and the interface in general is drag and drop, if I left click my scene, I can see here, and all I'm doing is holding down my left click, I have options here that I can put this to the right, I can put it to the bottom, whatever it is, uh, but I can have them side by side. And if we look at the view panel now, I can also link these views together. Right, so I can put in and say, oh, well, just I just want to center. So now when I move one, I move the other. So if I zoom into one, I can use center and scale as well. So that'll zoom me in to the area that I'm in. And I can move it around. I'm very useful. You know, I can always come back and say, actually, makes more sense if that's on top. Uh, but no matter what extent I'm in, I have options, right? And that's just one simple example 
with the 3D scene and a 2D map. Uh, obviously, it'll look better if I start to add data to this, but I'm sure you take my point. Unlimited views, we can link them together within the same view, right? So we're in the view tab across here, right? If I want a map and I want to convert it to a 3D scene, I can do that as well, or a 3D scene, right? A global scene to a map. You have options for it, right? But the most important thing we want to drive home is that it is possible to have multiple different views of your data within the same space, indeed within the same screen and the navigation in it is quite slick as well. If I zoom into an area, start navigating out, it still keeps the same center and scale linked cursor views, yeah? The other option then, if I ever lose my contents page, I can just get it back by going view contents, right? Simple enough. And then catalog pane, if I ever lose it, I can bring it back up here as well. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, resize your windows as well. So if something's too thick, you can make it thinner, et cetera, yeah? But you can see here, as I start to create my project collateral, they're gonna start appearing here. So map, scene, any toolboxes I created, any databases, most important ones, I think, just maps keep track of it, right? Because I've seen projects with hundreds of maps <laughs> within the same project, uh, which is possible. Uh, and also then folders, right? Uh, so if you have a file geodatabase, right? And you'll notice that like ArcGIS Pro creates a default file geodatabase for you. But if you also have a file geodatabase you want to connect to, you can do so. It's the exact same process we're going to do now for folders. And folders really can contain, you know, a lot of shape files, a lot of CSV files, a lot of DWGs. If you're coming from CAD, whatever it is, uh, we can add to it. So we talked about the interface. We talked about linking views, having multiple maps, multiple layouts in the same um, AP or X file, right? The same project file. But how to connect the data uh, is as simple as going right click on folders, go add folder connection. And I have one in here called Express Workflows for ArcGIS Pro. If I click OK on that folder and I expand it, you can see I have options. So I have Pro Course Practicals. That's a geo database that has air codes, road networks, school final, special areas of conservation. I have a logo that's JPEG, and then I have a schools CSV file as well. Just for your own curiosity, before we finish up this video, if I open up the same folder within Windows File Explorer, just to show you, you know, where kind of, you know, the catalog panes and the catalog views, the catalog in general in ArcGIS Pro comes into its own is, okay, well, I can see here, right, that I have schools, logo, and a file geodatabase. Nothing to write home about. I have the exact same thing if I look at it in Windows File Explorer. However, if I look at something that's only GIS readable, right, this, this, Geo database, this file geo database called Pro Course Practicals. I could see here if I open it up in Windows File Explorer, I get a bunch of gibberish, right? I can't make sense of anything here, right? Uh, I can't drag and drop anything, right? If I select things, try and drag them in, I'm going to get a fail message. It's going to add nothing to my Pro project. Conversely, if I open it up in ArcGIS Pro catalog pane, and I expand it, now I can see it's a lot more readable. It's user-friendly, yeah? That I can have, like, I see I have a road network data set. I have special areas of conservation. I have a CSV that I could geocode, whatever it is. But just, you know, uh, to let you know why that catalog pane does exist, it's to show you the things that you can bring in to your ArcGIS Pro projects. But that is it. That, that is a rough and ready overview of the interface in ArcGIS Pro, nothing to get too bogged down about, you know, like if I, if I make a mistake on a scene, I can just close it, you know, uh, I can right click, I can delete it, you know, um, if I make mistakes, I have to start again, cool enough, you know, I can add multiple databases here, multiple folders, right, if your organization has like a H drive, and they have all their GIS data on that, you can just connect to that straight away if they have, one drive and you have one drive connected, 
to your Windows account. You can make, you know, you can uh, add direct connections from your OneDrive to ArcGIS Pro and all that good stuff. But that is a rough and ready overview of the ArcGIS Pro interface. Most important thing, as we get to grips with this kind of mini course on YouTube, we just go up the top left and save <laughs> after each video if you're following along. But hopefully you found that helpful and uh, we'll be back with adding data in our next video.